guys welcome to another video today is going to be a view on a thousand broken pieces now this is the second book to um a thousand boy kisses that was the first book i read that last year and oh my goodness that book absolutely broke my heart i was left crying and i think it took me about a week to pick up another book because I was healing. <laughs> and this book, it broke me, but then it also put me back together. So when I left this book, I was okay. Um, so if you have not read A Thousand Broken Pieces or this book, I would click off this video, go read those books, and then come back because there are going to be spoilers for both books because I can't really talk about this book without spoiling the first book because um, they they go together. Um, anyway, let's just get right into it. So I want to talk about Poppy's Letters. Now, the first book... When Poppy is dying, I believe that there's like a small part where Rune is talking about Poppy like writing in notebooks and we find out she's writing to Savannah and Ida, her two sisters, and Savannah finally reads them. Now I should probably do a little breakdown on what this book is about, but first we're going to recap the first book. It is Poppy and Rune, duo POV, and they are childhood sweethearts. Um, I would say high school sweethearts, but they were they were together when they were children. Um, that sounds a little weird, but if you read the book, you know. And uh, Poppy gets this jar with a thousand paper or a thousand paper hearts. And her grandma is like, every time a boy kisses you and it's earth shattering and heart stoppingly amazing, write it down. Um, and she's like, I want you to get a thousand in your lifetime and here's a jar with a thousand hearts to write your kisses. Uh, Poppy ends up getting diagnosed with cancer at a young age. And she is like, kind of gives up on getting her kisses uh rune who was her neighbor and best friend he was helping her get the kisses he was kissing her and he was going to help her make the goal um something happens they kind of split they don't see each other for a couple years he comes back to town and uh, he finds out that she's sick of cancer and like the last half of the book is just them trying to make up for lost time and the time that they're not going to get because poppy is dying of cancer and he's trying to give her her kisses and yes they they make the goal and that made me cry <laughs> it was so sweet but so sad and oh my gosh i loved it but this book is Savannah, Poppy's little sister, um, who is just a couple years younger than her, and she is not okay with the loss. This book is four years after <laughs> the events of the first book, and Savannah is still just shattered, not even close to being healed, and her parents and therapist are worried. And they all decide, send her on a group healing trip with other kids who are going through losses like hers and just struggling to heal. She goes, uh, she's not really happy about it, but she understands and wants to get better. So she doesn't really put up a fight. She goes. And then we also have Kale, who is, we also get his POV. And he really does not want to go on this trip. He has, he is so angry with the loss that he has. And he doesn't, he fights, but he still goes on this trip. And uh, they meet 
and they kind of get to know each other and they fall in love while helping each other heal and it was really 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 sweet and I really liked it I just I wish they focused a little more on like the healing I would have loved to read a little more about like their one-on-one -on -one sessions like therapy sessions more of the group sessions we had a little bit of those in this book but not a whole lot it was mostly just them talking about having the sessions and it wasn't us getting to witness it um and they did show some of the activities that they did for healing um like i think the last one they were talking to a wireless f uh, phone that didn't work and they were breaking plates and putting them back together and making paintings and it was showing that which i really really loved but i also feel like it kind of heavily focused on the romance which i'm not critiquing i love a good romance um and then like the ending of the book was great they got a happy ending i love that uh, especially since the last book had such a devastating ending. I love that Savannah gets a happy ending and she's not left broken. Um, Savannah and Kale both actually end up going to Harvard. They both got accepted before they even went on the trip. So they're like, wow, it's like fate and destiny. And I really do think that because I am a person who believes in fate and destiny and all that stuff. I'm reading the book, literally, when I first realized they were both supposed to go to Harvard, I was like, oh my god, that's like fate for them. It's a destiny. They're supposed to be together. So, I was on board for that. Um, they did, I feel like they did kind of fall for each other kind of quick, because they were like, oh wow, that's an attractive person. Um, which, nothing wrong with that, but they did they did fall a little quick for each other and I, in my head i was kind of like is this because they're both broken so they're kind of falling for someone because they're both broken and vulnerable um but towards the end i was like okay no it wasn't just them being vulnerable and falling for someone for looks it was prob it probably started with that but then you know they started get they started to get to know each other and it became something way more deeper, way more vulnerable in a good way. Um, and just better. And they were trying so hard to lift each other up, help put each other back together, not let each other break. And when Kale had to leave Savannah, I was so shocked that that happened. My jaw was on the floor. I didn't think he would leave. I thought he was gonna fight it more than he did, but I was kind of relieved that he went. I was sad for Savannah, but I was kind of glad that he left because he did need that extra help because he was struggling to heal as quickly as the others and he needed that extra push. So I am really glad that he didn't stay for Savannah. I'm glad that he left to be with her in the end. And you know, it worked out because <laughs> The epilogue, eight years later, uh, I was also really sad to find out that Rune died. I mean, in the first book, we know that he passes away and meets Poppy again. But I was still sad to read about it in this book. Because I like Rune. He is such... Uh, he's just such a fun character and a good guy. And I loved reading his perspective in the last book. Along with Poppy, like, I love Poppy and adore her, and I wish she was a real person so that I could just give her a hug. Um, I also love Savannah, who is just a sweetheart and did not deserve any of the heartbreak that she got. None of them deserved it, but really Savannah, like, it hit her so hard, and I was so proud of her by the end of this book. She grew so strong and she went through so much and I am just so proud that she was able to overcome this heartbreak and 
find love because I truly got the sense that she did not think she would heal or find love or end up being happy again which I love um I'm not to compare this with you've reached Sam but I'm gonna kind of compare um would I read this if I was going through a loss probably not I would probably wait until I, myself, have healed from the loss. Do I think it's a fun read? I probably shouldn't have said fun, but yes, <laughs> it's a good read. Um, absolutely broke my heart in the beginning. Anytime Poppy's letters showed up, I was crying. <laughs> Even in the end, when, when Savannah opened Poppy's last letter, and read it I was crying there was not one letter that I did not cry and it just made me miss Poppy so yeah I gave this a 4.5 out of 5 um I'm a very like picky person very I critique a lot of things even if it's good so I've noticed I don't really rate a lot of things five I'm gonna try to work on that I feel like sometimes I'm a little too critiquing and too judgy so I will try to work on that but for now this is a 4.5 and just because I don't rate it a five out of five doesn't mean you won't you could read this book and absolutely hate it or you can read this book and absolutely love it it's purely just what you like, what entertains you, and what books you read. But yeah, I think that's it for this video. I said my piece with this book. This was a really good book. And I think this is the end of this series. Um, I don't think there's going to be any more. If there is, I will read it. But I don't think there is. At least not right now. Maybe that could always change in the future people change their minds but uh yeah comment down below if you've read this book and your thoughts or if you've only read the first book i don't one i don't know why you watched until the end but do comment down below what you thought of the first book um yeah also comment down below your favorite heartbroken heart breaking book love story specifically a heartbreaking love story and if I have not read that I'm adding it to my TBR because I don't know what it is I just I love heartbreaking love stories I don't know what that says about me but it's the truth anyway I'll see you guys next week with a little surprise I am doing another Akatar reading vlog Obviously, you should know which book of the series, because I've been vlogging every book of the series. But I will say the next one is going to be just one video, because it's short. Um, I am in the process of making that video, and all I gotta say is I am enjoying myself. <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs> Bye!